people recall earlier in the week, um, I think if uh, I don't, I don't know if we played this in the uh, better half of the program or not, but I uh, replayed a clip uh, that we did on Break Room Live back in the day. I think Marin was absent that day. God knows he slacked off a lot during that show. Left me with the with the um, yeoman's work, and uh, we talked about a 13-year-old kid, 14 maybe at the time, who um, had uh, given a, a speech at CPAC, had become a uh, a darling of the conservative world, as you would expect. He was uh, very articulate, and um, he had written a book. Uh, and he was given a speech, which um, I, I think I fairly critiqued um, at the time. And uh, then earlier this week, a story, I think it was in Politico, saying that um, he had changed. And uh, I'd like to welcome to the show Jonathan Crone. Welcome to the program, Jonathan. I'm glad I could be here, Sam. Uh, well, was I, let, let's start with this, because you're going to give us some movie recommendations. But let's, uh, let's, let's do a, a little house cleaning. First off, um, so I did that piece on Break Room Live. And then you tweeted, and I, I, and when I, when I, when I was talking about it, I said maybe he watched the show. Did you really watch it? You tweeted me. You said you watched it at the time. You didn't watch it. I did. It. When I you did. were a kid, I did. I, I, I remember when I did the, when I gave the speech. I looked at all the media stuff that um, there, there was a lot of stuff coming in. Right. And it was one of the YouTube videos that came up. I remember um, around that time having to do with me, and I saw that video. I remember that. And, and do, I do remember that. Like, what did you think at the time? Because I, I, I don't, I don't think I, I knocked you personally. I think I was talking about. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't as bad as some of the stuff I had said about me. I, I mean, bet. come on. It, I've had I've had a lot worse said about me. I mean, and even worse now. I've had probably some of the worst stuff ever said about me after this. So well, yes. Nothing. I mean, nobody likes nobody likes uh, likes it when you renounce their positions. The people had really uh, the conservative movement had really at least at that time invested quite a bit in in you, uh, hadn't they? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess they they uh, had supported my books. They supported my. Uh, my my writing, I guess, and they supported me speaking. I just, you know, and I um, I, I have a piece I'm I just, I'm finishing up for Salon right now, actually, uh, about this, about my personal reflection here, and you know, what, part of what I say in there is it, it's the it's this mentality that a lot of people on the right have that it's so awful that I decided to let myself take time to think about things and maybe just move on. I don't know why they're so upset. This I I matured. I, I think um I believe the the title I decided upon for the piece is Kid Matures, Conservatives Don't Understand Why This Happens. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I don't I don't know why they're 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 so upset and uh, and still wondering why this happens. Actually, one of the best things, and, I, and I'm not the only one who's critiqued this. A few people, and I think the Young Turks, um, who actually I'm going to be on on their show tonight, but they actually made a they actually made a joke about this too. The Fox Five did a big thing making fun of me about because of all this, and they they went on there. One of the rips they gave me, and I didn't notice this because I was running out of the I was in a green room when this when when the show came on for the Fox Five making fun of me because I had seen a tweet about it. And I didn't, so I didn't get a chance to watch most of it. But apparently after I left, the Fox 5 went on to say, and he quoted philosophy. Now, when you quote philosophy, that's just, you, you shouldn't, that just shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. That's just not cool. It doesn't make you look good. And I'm like, wait, what? Am I not, is that, is that a bad thing? Apparently having an, have a, having an education in philosophy according to the right, according to the Fox 5, and talking about it is a bad thing. Apparently. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, of the uh, of the, the the Fox Five have to be the worst of the worst. I mean, they're it, they're just it, it is. But I, you know, what's sad is that like they they have people such as Dana Perino, who is an actual press secretary for for a former president, and I I I just had kind of hoped that she'd have a bit more class and say that's not that's not a nice thing to say about anybody at all. Just give me, and like, like Greg Gutfield, who's the most unfunny attempt at a comedian in the history of mankind. He actually went on there and said he would have left me in the woods as a baby. And <laughs> <laughs> How is that funny? That is not funny. And they laughed. How, and then he said, Crohn, he said, I have quote Crohn's disease. Hmm. That is not funny. 
That is rude. That is mean to everybody who has Crohn's disease. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> what you're learning, and you'll you'll see this more, is that uh, the <laughs> the notion that you have of adults and the supposed uh, decorum and competence that they have. As you get older, you begin to realize that that is all just a mirage, and um, yeah. the the Dana Perinos of the world are 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 the you know. I mean, we don't see this much in any uh, public life, I think, much, the, you know, some measure of, of decorum. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of people who go for a buck in that situation. Uh, and, uh, yes, but you're absolutely right about Greg Gutfield. And um, and, and I think you... you how, sir- how was he? How did he... How, why did anybody give him his own show well, as a, to be a comedian on? He's I, not funny. I got to tell you, Jonathan, you, you realize that you, from a career perspective... Um, you certainly, uh, you certainly, you, you, you could have made so much money as that, uh, right wing uh, pundit, uh, so much. I mean, I, I'm just, I mean, I imagine you did okay with the book, but I'm saying, oh dude, you have no idea what you gave up. Look at Greg well, Gutfield. He's a, he, yeah. he, he, people actually think he's a comedian now. I, I know. I mean, I, 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 I don't get it. I really don't. It's, it's kind of sad. Um, but, but you know, to each his own, I guess. Everybody's right. entitled to think, have their own definition of humor, I guess. Just don't impose your own definition of humor on me, I There suppose. you go. Well, I, let me <laughs> ask a question. So this is what also is sort of fascinating to me. Now, you're heading, to, you're heading uh, to, to school. It's been reported you're going to NYU. We can talk about uh, the potential of an internship uh, at, a, at, a, at a later time uh, as, uh, as we are based in New York. But um, what... L- how did it come about that they wrote that Politico wrote a story about you? I mean, it, w- was this basically you saying like, oh, I got, I'm going to college. Uh, undoubtedly, people are going to, uh, you know, my stuff is all over YouTube. I, I got to set the record straight or, or I, I, yeah. you know, I'm not going to well, have any friends there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, I actually, I actually do make mention of that in the in the salon piece. And what I see there is that the people who think that I'm doing this to get acceptance at school obviously don't know how the internet works, right? Once you have a video on YouTube, it's in the international, the world consciousness forever, right? Right? They're, they're, it's not going away. And you think that just because I go and tell people I've changed my mind. The people in the world, and much less in a school environment, are going to just ignore an easily lambasted speech of a 13-year-old me with a nasally high-pitched voice ranting about conservatism's four principles. Obviously, anybody who thinks that hasn't met the people that live on the Internet. There are people who live on the Internet who will make fun of that till I die. And then after that, it's not... So to think that I did this to fit in at school is just crazy. No, I did this because what happened was I had, I had been writing a lot of political humor and satire pieces recently, and I, and I wanted to get some of them published. So I knew Patrick because he had interviewed me before. And so I didn't know, you know, if he had any place for that. And so I sent that to him, and I talked to him about, you know, what I've been doing since I last saw him. And he's always been very nice to me. And he emailed me back and saying, I don't, because they don't really do humor pieces. I didn't think, I knew they didn't. I just was seeing if, if there was some opening he knew. And so he said, hey, how about I do a piece on you and how you've changed? And I said, okay, that'd be fine. I, nah, I don't care. So we ended up doing that. And I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. But it turned out to be a lot bigger of a deal to a lot of people than, it, than I thought it was going to be. So that's Well, it's going to save happened. you a lot of, I mean, I mean because you, you undoubtedly would have been at school and you would have had to explain to a lot of people, like, I don't, uh, yes. I, you know, at least now that part of the conversation is over. You don't have to spend uh, the first yep. year and a half of your school uh, school experience sort of just trying to explain to you people, like, I was only 13. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 I agree. It's, uh, I, I have a, I, 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 I didn't want to, that was the other part of it, is I was tired of people who met me on the street or who I'd meet from different things who said they'd seen me on TV and want to say, oh, you're that conservative kid, so when's your next book out, or I read your book, or where can I buy, and I don't want, and I have to, give, it takes like 15 minutes to explain to them what I'm doing now. And I wanted to move on with my life. It's going to be very, it would be extremely hard if I had to explain that to people every time, and then have to tell people what I'm doing now, 
it's hard for me to kind of move on with life and do the other things I'm doing now and try to do that. And that's, and that's part of what I hope I, that I hope this brings, I guess. I want people to just kind of see me as a person who does right. other things than a speech four years ago. What, do, you, you know? uh, do, you, do, you, do you regret it? I mean, in the sense that, like, I mean, not so much. Obviously, look, people change and this and that, but it's very hard, as I think as a kid, uh, to, you know, you put yourself out there and, um, you know, sort of, it seems like in some ways it's going to work out for you in terms of you've been able to sort of in one fell swoop, get the redefinition over with and maybe take another step and you'll return to some measure of normalcy. Uh, but do you think, I mean, do you think it's just even a good idea for kids, uh, of that age to be out there? Because, you know, God, I, I, I yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, be. yeah, yeah. I think that the the rule of thumb, and this is this is this is a thing, and I and I think this is true. The rule of thumb is that if you're not old enough to have consensual sex, you're not old enough to make consequential political statements. <laughs> that's the rule of thumb. At least that's, that's going to go out onto onto YouTube. I mean, everybody, you know, sitting at home, you know, you're arguing with your parents, okay, but you know, you don't want to be locked in like in amber yeah, because yeah, it, yeah, that's my, that's my point. That's my point. You shouldn't take you shouldn't take people that are that young so seriously. And I mean, you know, first of all, you shouldn't take anybody as seriously as a lot of people took me anyway. That's, my, that's the lesson I learned about this. Politics, in a lot of ways, people are not as serious as they want to be. You know, their comments are not, should not be taken, should, every comment should be, every comment you hear in any kind of serious context should be taken with a grain of salt in any field. Much, in politics more than any other, though. Because people say crazy stuff. People say stuff they're going to regret right later in life. People have high, high emotions in this divisive climate that we live in today. To think that people are going to just say stuff that we should, that we should, that is that is one hundred percent correct and that they'll never change their mind on, is 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 an idiotic way to live. It is to think that that's how it's going. That that's how the world works. You know, we have to we have to kind of laugh at everything. You've got to kind of find the, the humor in everything. And I think that that's kind of how I developed my sense of humor about this and why I've enjoyed writing um, satirical stuff now. And, why every, and, and that's why I have vowed to only write less serious political stuff uh, from now on. I will only do political humor or something that I can, I can, I'm allowed to laugh at because I don't want to, I don't want to do something where it's going to be it's going to be an issue because right. it's so divisive. I don't want to be a part of this divisiveness and this battle and this war that goes on between the left and the right. At what time did it, at, at what point? I mean, you, so you're 13 or 14, I guess, when the book came out, and uh, and I want to add, uh, what at what point did things start to change, or when did you get off the circuit? I mean. Was it uh, were like a year later? Were you like, well, that was a weird time in my life, and it... well, it was like it was it was dur- I I don't know exactly how to explain it. It was just after after the book came out, and I did all the promotion for that. I guess you know I I just stopped and thought about it, and you know there were still events that I ended up doing, but I did it kind of you know I was still kind of questioning what I was what I was thinking about, and I just I didn't know what what what, what it was I, I really did believe as an individual, so I really wanted to take time away and not do, and and not do anything else but just think. So that's really where I when I started reading a lot of philosophy, and it started giving me the opportunity to be. Uh, in, to be engaged in something else right. other than politics and take my mind away from that. And I think that's important that everybody try and do that. It might not work for everybody, but everybody should have the opportunity to, you know, take time away from everything else and just sit down and do something besides what they've been doing forever. Yes. You know, for, just, just let your mind relax. And philosophy let me do that. It let me relax my mind by focusing on something else and focusing all my energy on that and not even thinking about politics for a while. Um, well, you know, I still kept up with the news, but, you know, I, I didn't focus my energy on it. And it really, it just made me a better person, I think. What was the dynamic in, in high school? I mean, were there other kids, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I imagine you didn't have sort of some type of explicit bright line where, you know, you, you had an assembly at high school and said, I just want everybody to know, like, I don't, I'm not really so much on board with all that stuff that I was doing in junior high. Yeah, but... In, in high school, I mean, even though there are kids who are really involved in politics, right? It's a lot. I mean, it, you, you don't, 
it's not as right. The Justin Bieber debates <laughs> are bigger than uh, yeah. than anything else. Well, I, mean, I don't. Maybe. I don't know anybody in high school that liked Justin Bieber. I'm sorry, but, buddy. Uh, I got a six and a half year old. That's all I all I hear now is Justin Bieber <laughs> debates and yeah, Katy Perry's better. Like, I'm just saying, man. It's like uh, in uh, in high school, you know, everybody's a bit more mature than than I would I would like to think. Everybody I knew was a bit more mature than. You know, that kid was the kid who said something when he before he ever came here. Right. You know, they, 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 no, people aren't like that. People are rude, regardless of what age they are. Right. So, I mean, there were people who, had, who, had, who were not nice to me for other reasons, mainly because I was a nerdy individual. I had nothing to do with what I wrote. But, yeah, most people didn't even know that I had done all that, you know, in the past. And uh, they didn't know it until later. Until I tried to, you know, say what I've done with my life, and this is who I am, and try to exp- and tell them tell them about myself, you know. So that was that was when that was the only time people learned about it, and it really wasn't. It really that wasn't as big a point of controversy as as anything else that goes on in high school. Have your parents been uh, been cool about this whole thing? I mean, they have to be. Yeah, they, I mean, they yeah, have they to be. Have. They have to be at they've least. Been, they've been really. Nice. I mean, proud of the fact that you're sort of like obviously. Uh, intellectually engaged. I mean, if my kid, you know, came to me and told me that she was uh, uh, reading Nietzsche, I, I, you know, and I don't care what that led her to, uh, I, I would, I'd be like, oh, well, that's, wow, you're you're smarter than your dad. Um. Anyhow. Uh. Yeah. 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 I agree. Oh, uh, sorry. I was reading. I, I'm just. I'm just like. Uh, yeah. My dad uh, called me a uh, flaming liberal, um, <laughs> and I, I, I asked him, what, do, you, do you know what that means? Why, why are you calling me flaming? I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm not a flaming liberal. No, you're pretty flaming, he replied. So, <laughs> Well, if it you makes know. you feel better, when my father, uh, when I uh, left law school, he, he said that my uh, sideburns were a side that I was embracing communists. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and yeah, my father, so I think, I mean, is 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 left of center. Uh, <laughs> it's just I think there's just a difficulty that uh, parents have yeah. uh, watching their kids grow. I was just I I think that I'm just more center left than I am any flaming whatever. Um, they're both very proud of what I've done with my life. Good. They're very proud of who I am, and they uh, they're supportive. Um, <laughs> uh, flaming liberal comments aside. Um, and, uh, it's, it's been, it's been fine. All right. Before we get to the uh, movie recommendations, I have to ask you a couple of questions. You're in the, you're in the back, you're in the green rooms with uh, guys like Newt Gingrich. I've seen pictures of you guys hanging out and all sorts of conservative luminaries. I seem to remember like Bill Bennett. Um, uh, I don't know if he sent you a gift basket or, or whatever it was, but I mean, did you, were, were any of these guys, was there any particularly good stories that, uh, that uh, you had in, in your experience? No, nothing, nothing, nothing particularly juicy. Uh-huh. Um, I think the juiciest thing that you're going to get is the picture of me with Andrew Breitbart, James O'Keefe in the pimp suit, and Carl Rove. Now, wait a second, that wasn't that long ago. That was, that was, that was two, three years ago. That was when the book came out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was when I was doing the book, the promotion for the book, actually. Um, and oh, I went yeah, on with Carl Rove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But that, <laughs> that's probably, and I, I, there have been a lot of tweets about that, um, say, calling it the picture of the day yesterday. And uh, people saying um, one of them grew up and it was the smallest one. So yeah, I mean there were there were there were um, there there were a lot of great comments about that photo in particular. I would imagine. Um, Did you get job offers? You must have got a ton of job offers. I really believe it or not, I didn't get as many as people seem to think I did. I I pro I I I because I, I never really tried to right. do that much with that because I was I was still fourteen. Right. I wasn't thinking about that as much. Um, so yeah, and, 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 and it's not, and, and people think that I got so much money off of that book. I didn't. Authors don't get paid that much no, money. I know. Uh, the people who say that obviously have never been authors. Right. You because have to be, you have to, you have to really be like, you have, have to be a New York Times bestseller to make a lot of money off your book. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Believe me. Believe me. I know. Um, all right. Well, it's uh, it, it's it, it's just it's a very fun story, and uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, you know, you're a, a, an impressive kid. Uh, I disagreed with you when you were 13, 
Um, and, uh, you know, but, uh, it was, it was definitely a fun story at the time. And, uh, now you're, uh, you're, you're, you're a little more, you're getting interested in film. Is that what you're going to major in at NYU? I'm majoring in philosophy, but I, uh, want to do filmmaking. I was thinking of doing film writing. I just, you know, I wanted to, I, 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 I love philosophy so much and I still love film. And there are a lot of great film writers who have and filmmakers who have did philosophy, Wes Anderson, for instance, and, uh, I believe it was Joel Cohen who did philosophy as well. You know, they both did, those are both philosophy majors. So, I mean, I know that it's, it, it's something I can still. Uh, oh, no, you're, filmmaking. listen, you're smart. Get, get a, get a, get a good education and you, your filmmaking will always be better. Yeah, so I mean, I'm still, I'm still doing that though. I mean, obviously, I've been working on a screenplay and uh, trying to make that work. And the whole, I mean, it's, it, it's that, that's a lot harder than anything I've done because it's so hard to get funding for that kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, um, as, as you know, I know that's a long but, road to hoe, buddy. Long yeah. road to hoe. Um, all right. Well, so um, apropos of your uh, of your interest in uh, filmmaking. Uh, every Friday, we have somebody on to give me uh, movie recommendations for the weekend. Now, um, you will find as you get older and you get entrapped uh, by a uh, spouse and a child, if uh, you so desire, uh, or make that mistake, you will find that you're not allowed to go out and see uh, movies that often. Uh, and so every movie you see becomes precious. Every, t- every, mm-hmm. every time that you have an opportunity to spend 90 minutes without having to deal with all the horribleness of a family uh i'm i'm exaggerating for a fact jonathan um <laughs> well my well well my my mother hates quentin tarantino in any film that has any violence in it so when i'm alone and i get an opportunity to watch a film without her rolling her eyes at how what i'm watching it's it, i understand the getting away from the oh that's why i take business <laughs> trips is just so to be able to watch like uh some action movie in the uh on the uh on the on the hotel uh you know movie pay, pay for movie system it's the only reason why oh, i yeah. travel um, all right, so what do you got? You got, any, you got a, a couple all of recommendations? Right, all right. I got, I, if you want, I, I got something very kind of obscure. I got a few films for you, but uh, have you seen Black Dynamite yet? No. Okay. You need to go see that film. It's a, there are some people who don't like it and some people who do. The reason I it? mention it is, cause, okay, it's an obscure-ish, not really, I, I guess it's not too obscure anymore because uh, Adult Swim picked it up to make a cartoon series based off of it starting this month, actually. Oh. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised about that. I just saw that a few days ago, and I was like, oh, that's cool. So um, they, the film is about, it's essentially a spoof of black exploitation, which is a subgenre of, of exploitation films from the 70s, as well as a sat- it doesn't just spoof that. It also spoofs old kung fu movies and action films, all while making itself an alternative history film. And you don't really get that it's an alternative history film until the very end of the film, which, where... Don't um, ruin it. Okay, well, I'm not, well, I will not ruin what happens. I will only say, because they go to the White House, so <laughs> there is a lovely nunchuck battle between uh, Richard Nixon and the main character. I remember and, when this came out. I never saw yeah. it. Yeah, it was... What would you say? I never saw it, but I do remember yeah, when yeah, it came yeah, yeah. out. It wasn't. It wasn't a mainstream film. I mean, it was an indie film that didn't. It, it was a. Lo, it was relatively low budget, and then they got a good bit of. I think they got a good bit of funding when they first started pitching it, and then I don't remember what happened. And then it was. A, it, it was a cult success for a while because a lot of people have liked it, and um, I know. I know there have been various reviews. I know Roger Ebert even liked it, which I was surprised because it's not a very. I, I didn't think it was really his style of film. It's a very weird film. It's one of those films you have to watch to kind of understand why it's good. Um, they do. A, it's very absurd. The humor is extremely absurdist. They have um, all the music in the film, except for I think one song is written by the writer who also plays the main character, and all the songs are are actually literal descriptions of what's physically going on in the story. <laughs> So it's 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 just a very absurd film. Um, and if you and if you don't if you're not interested in that kind of thing, um, well, I also hold on for one second. Uh, it's name drop Friday here, and Chris Spencer plays militant number one. As I look it up, and um, I uh, I did a TV show with Chris Spencer almost 20 years ago now. Well, closer to I guess 18. Um, it's name go. drop Friday. So there you go. That's the best I got. He's there about go. 14th down on the list of credits. So it's not, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not terribly impressive, but, uh, yeah. we got another one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've, another film that I recently saw that was another independent weird film was uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which is a very that. weird film. It's, it's a spoof film of horror, of, of horror films, especially like the, and, and romantic comedies. It's a spoof film of all that. It's a very weird film. Um, it got a lot of really good reviews, which I was really surprised, um, and it, because it was not like a really traditional film. Uh, it was a good film, but it's the director's first film, so I was really surprised about that, too. Um, it was well done. It was, it was, it was funny because it, because of its spoof of horror films and the way they did it by completely turning it around. What it's about is it's about a, a couple of hillbillies who buy a cabin in the woods near a lake and a bunch of college students who go down camping at the lake and the stereotypes that these college students have about the hillbillies and they start thinking that their um, axe murderers are going to come kill them and they end up, uh, and they end, there's a bunch of hijinks there. So it's really funny. Um, and then, yeah, so I mean, those are some very obscure-ish films that That's I've great. watched recently. I've watched a lot of good films, but those were some of the most recent obscure-ish films that I thought you'd appreciate. Those are uh, great picks, and um, I'm sure they're available on uh, Netflix or Amazon or one of the uh, streaming devices that I use. Uh, yep. Or I yeah, can... probably. I, I know, I'm pretty sure Black Dynamite definitely would, because it's gotten a lot of traction recently because of the Adult Swim thing, so it'll probably be on some, it'll probably be on one of them. Fantastic. Well, um, uh, Jonathan, I gotta thank you very much. Let's let's. I want to check in with you um, and uh, see how you're doing. Maybe have you come back on because these are good uh, movie recommendations. Absolutely, I'd love to. All right. Well, congratulations. We'll keep an eye out. Um, uh, somebody just IM me asked if uh, you want an internship on the Majority Report. We can talk about that later, buddy. Um, All right. Uh, it's not exactly fancy around here. You probably will have other opportunities. But uh, uh, thanks so much for joining us, Jonathan. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. Loved it. Good have luck. Good, uh, good luck with school.